friends welcome to my channel thanesh here in this video i am going to do an implementation for classification using pytorch in machine learning classification refers to a predict predictive modeling problem where a class label is predicted for a given example of input data examples of classification problems include uh, classify whether the email is spam or not given a handwritten character classify it as one of the known characters these are all examples of classification see as you are aware PyTorch is an open source machine learning library based on the Torch library used for applications such as computer vision, natural language processing. PyTorch and TensorFlow libraries are two of the most commonly used Python libraries for deep learning. PyTorch is developed by Facebook while TensorFlow is a Google project. In this video, you will see how the PyTorch library can be used to solve classification problems. Classification problems belong to the category of machine learning problems where, a given, a, where given a set of features, the task is to predict a discrete value, predicting whether a tumor is cancerous or not or whether a student is likely to pass or fail in the exam are some of the common examples of classification problems. In this video, given certain characteristics of a bank customer, we will predict whether or not the customer is likely to leave the bank after six months. The phenomena where a customer leaves an organization is also called customer churn. Therefore, our task is to predict customer churn based on various customer characteristics. Before we proceed, it is assumed that you have intermediate level proficiency with the Python programming language and uh, you have installed the PyTorch library. Also, how you know basic machine learning concepts see you can install pytorch library uh, by using anaconda or even with you know from command prompt you can give a pip install i have given a conta install of uh, since i am using anaconda if you are using python you can use a pip install pytorch the data set uh, you can download it from this link uh, this is the link uh, i am using for uh, downloading the data set so now we will get into the um, you know program see i have imported you know torch numby pandas let me run this so it's uh, it's running fine <coughs> see i have you know saved uh, the uh, you know the data set in this folder uh, you can see here uh, there is this is the csv file i am using it here you can see here this is the csv file this is the uh, here you have the customer id the surname okay uh, so the credit score geography gender age tenure uh, you know all these details are here you can download this excel sheet as i have given in the link so i have saved in the in my local system inside this folder you can see here the colon tatumasi you know here i have saved it now uh, what i am going to do is here we need to you know get the uh, data set i am using the pandas um, you know read underscore csv so by using that i'm i'm going to get this um, you know 
file so i am going to run this so you can see see i am using this read underscore csv method and i have given the local systems the file path in the local system and it i have given the shape so data set dot shape so it will give the 10,014 that means it contains the 10,000 records with 14 columns so we can use the hit method of the pandas data frame to print the first five rows of our data set yeah it's printed the first five rows it's printed you can see it here yeah it's fine uh, you can see 14 columns in our data set based on the first 13 columns our task is to predict the value for the 14th column that is column is exited it is important to mention that the values for the first 13 columns are recorded six months before the value for the exited column was obtained since the task is to predict customer churn after six months from the time when the customer information is recorded now we will get into the uh, exploratory data analysis let us perform some exploratory data analysis in our data set we will first predict the ratio of the customer who actually left the bank after six months we'll use a pipe plot to visualize this uh, let's first increase the default plot size for the graphs let's do that yeah it's working so you can see the output here the output shown here it shows that our data set 20 percentage of the customers left the bank here one belongs to the case where the customers left the bank and where zero refers to the scenario where a customer didn't leave the bank let us plot the number of customers from all the geographical loca locations in the data set yeah you can see the output here it's shown here the output shows that almost half of the customers belongs to france while the ratio of customers belonging to spain and germany is 25 percent each let's now plot number of customers from each unique geographical location along with customer churn information we can use the count plot function from the seaborn library to do so yeah you can see the output here it's uh, showing here uh, the output shows that though the overall number of french customers is twice that of the number of spanish and german customers the ratio of customers who left the bank is the same for french and german customers similarly the overall number of german and spanish customers is the same but the number of german customers who left the bank is twice that of the spanish customers which shows that the german customers are more likely to leave the bank after six months and do not visually plot the information related to the rest of the column in our data set but if you want to do so uh, you can do it how to perform the exploratory data analysis you can do that as well now we will get into the data pre-processing before we train our pytorch model we need to 
pre-process our data. If you look at the data set, you will see that it has two types of columns. One is the numerical and categorical. The numerical column contains numer numerical information, credit score, balance, age, etc. Similarly, geography and gender are categorical columns since they contain categorical information such as the location and genders of the customers. There are a few columns that can be treated as numerical, numeric as well as categorical. For example, the has CR card column can have one or zero as its value. You have uh, seen that column has CR card. However, the has CR card columns contains information about whether or not a customer has credit card. It is advised that the column that can be treated as both categorical and numerical are treated as categorical. However, it totally depends upon the domain knowledge of the data set. Let's print all the columns in our data set and find out which of the column can be treated as numer numerical and which column should be treated as categorical. The column attribute of a data frame prints all the column names. Let's do that. Yeah, you can see it here uh, from the columns in our data set we will not use the row number customer id and surname columns since the values for these columns are totally random and have no relation with the output for example a customer surname has no impact on whether or not the customer will leave the bank among the rest of the columns geography gender has cr card and is active member columns can be treated as categorical columns. Let us create a list of these columns. It's done. All of the remaining columns except the exited column can be treated as numerical column see it here i'm just running it as well yeah finally the output of the values from the exited column are stored in the output variable let's do yeah fine We have created a list of categorical, numeric and output columns. However, uh, at the moment the type of the categorical column is not categorical. You can check the type of all the column in the data set with the following script. You can see it here. Yeah. So from this you understood after uh, you can see that the type for geography and gender columns is object and the type for has CR card and is active column is int 64. We need to convert the types for categorical columns to category. We can do so using the C as type function. Uh, I will write the script for that then you will understand that. If you again plot the types for the columns in our data set you should see the uh, following research, uh, results. Let me write the python code for that. You can use the... So this is the output you are able to see here. Let's now see all the categories in the geography column. Yeah, you can see it here. 
See, when you change a column's data types to category, each category in the column is assigned a unique code. For instance, let's plot the first five rows of the geography column and print the code values for the first five rows. So you can see the output here. Uh, the next script plots the codes for the values in the first five rows of the geography column. It shows that the France has been coded as zero and um, Spain has been coded as two. The basic purpose of separating categorical column from the numerical columns is that values in the numerical column can directly fed into neural networks. However, the values for the categorical columns first have to be converted into numeric types. The coding of the values in the categorical column partially solve the task of numerical conversion of the categorical columns. Since we will be using PyTorch for model training, we need to convert our categorical and numerical columns to tensors. Let's first convert the categorical columns to tensors. In PyTorch, tensors can be created via the NumPy arrays. You know tensors are containers for data. There are, you know, vectors, matrices. They are all tensors. You have zeroth order tensor, first order tensor, second order tensor you are familiar with tensors. We will first convert data in our four categorical columns into numby arrays and then stack all the columns horizontally. That's what I am going to do in the following script. Let's do. Yeah, you can see the output here. See this script uh, prints the first 10 records from the categorical columns stacked horizontally the output you can see here now to create a tensor from the uh, you know numby array you can simply pass the array to the tensor class of the torch module for the categorical columns the data type should be torch.in64 you can see the output here see this is the output in the output you can see that the numby array of categorical data has now been converted into a tensor object you can see here in the same way we can convert our numerical columns to tensors that's what i am going to that's also done in the output you can see the first five rows containing the values for the six numerical columns in the data set. The final step is to convert the output numby array into a tensor object script. Yeah, you have seen the output. Now we will plot the shape of our categorical data, numerical data and the corresponding output. We will see it. Uh, let's write the script for that. You can see the output here. There is a one important step before uh, we can train our model. We converted our categorical columns to a numerical where a unique value is represented by a single integer. For instance, in the geography column, we saw that France is represented by zero and Germany is represented by one. We can use these values to train our model. However, you need to understand this. A better way is to represent 
values in a categorical column in the form of an n-dimensional vector instead of a single integer. A vector is capable of capturing more information and can find relationships between different categorical values in a more appropriate way. Therefore, we will represent values in the categorical columns in the form of n-dimensional vectors. This process you may be familiar is known as embedding. We need to define the embedding size that is vector dimensions for all the categorical columns. There is no hard and fast rule regarding the number of dimensions. A good rule of thumb to define the embedding size for column is to divide the number of unique values in the column by 2, but not exceeding 50. For example, for the geography column, the number of unique value is 3. The corresponding embedding size for the geography column will be 3 by 2, that is 1.5. We will round it as 2. And I'm going to write the script that creates a tuple that contains the number of unique values and the dimension size for all the categorical columns. Let's do that. Trained using training data and model performance is evaluated on the test data set. Therefore, we need to divide our data set into training and test sets so the following script I am going to write will do that. To run the script, it's done. Now we have 10,000 records in our data set of which 80% of records that is 8,000 records will be used to train the model while the remaining 20% records will be used to evaluate the performance of our model. Notice in the script above, the categorical and numerical data as well as the outputs have been divided into the training and test sets. We will print this, then you will understand more clarity on this. You can see the output here. Now we are going to create a model for prediction. We have divided the data set into training and test sets. Now we will define a class named model which will be used to train the model. Let's write the script for that. Uh, this is the script for this. Uh, you can see it here. I am going to run this script. This is the class model. I will explain you the code. And first, let me run this. Yeah, it's working. So, if you see this, what you need to understand if you have never worked with PyTorch before, the code I have written will be a little bit confusing, but I will, you know, I will make you understand this in the first line we declare a model class that inherits from module class from pytorch nn module in the constructor of the class the following parameters are passed you can see here embedding size output size etc inside the constructor a few variables are initialized all underscore embedding variables contains the list of module list. The embedding dropout stores the dropout values for all the arrays. The batch underscore norm underscore num stores the list of batch norm ID objects for all the numerical columns. To find the size of the input layer, number of categorical and numerical columns are added together uh, and stored in the input underscore size value variable. 
After that, the for loop iterates and the corresponding layers are added into the all underscore layers list. The layers are the layers are adding here. They are linear, uh, relu. You can see here I have added the layers as well. They are linear, relu, and dropout batch norm id those layers also added linear used to calculate the dot product between inputs and weights matrices relu which is applied as an activation function rectified linear unit you are familiar batch norm id used to apply batch normalization to the numerical columns dropout used to do avoid overfitting after, after the for loop, the output layer is appended to the list of layers. Since we want all the layers in the neural networks to ex execute sequentially, the list of layers is passed to the nn.sequential class. In the forward method, both the categorical and numerical columns are passed as inputs. You can see it here. The embedding of the categorical column takes place in the following lines after that. That is the embedding is happening. You have you can see the embedding the uh, you know list it is defined. After that you have the for loop. The batch normalization of the numerical column that is happening under the you know you have x underscore numerical there I am doing the batch normalization. The embedded categorical columns x and the numerical column x underscore numerical are concatenated together and passed to the sequential layers. Next we will train the model. To train the model first we have to create an object of the model class that we defined in the pre in this code. Let's do it's working. Okay. You can see that we pass the embedding size of the categorical columns, the number of numerical columns, the output size that is 2 and the neurons in the hidden layers. You can uh, see that we have 3 hidden layers with 200, 100 and 50 neurons respectively. You can choose any other size if you want. I will print the model. You can see more clarity. You can see the output here. When I print it, this is the output I am getting. Yeah. You can see that the first linear layer of the value of in underscore features variable is 11 since we have six numerical columns and the sum of embedding dimensions for the categorical columns is 5. Hence, 6 plus 5 is equal to 11. In the same way, in the last layer, the out underscore features has values of 2 since we have only 2 possible outputs. Before we can actually train our model, we need to define the loss function and the optimizer that we will be used to train the model. And uh, uh, since we are solving a classification problem, we will use the cross entropy loss for the optimizer function we will use the adam optimizer you are familiar learning rate as 0.01 you can see here let me run this uh, you know piece of code yeah it's working fine so everything we have now we can train the model let me write the script to train the model uh, yeah, it's uh, it started. The number of epochs is set to 300, which means that to train the model, the complete data set will be used 300 times. That's the meaning. A for loop executes for 300 times, and during each iteration, the loss is calculated using the loss function. The loss during each iteration is appended to the aggregated underscore loss list. 
to update the weights the backward function of the single underscore loss object is called finally the step method to method of the optimizer function updates the gradient the loss is printed after every 25 epochs it's done it's completed now let us write the script that plots the losses against epochs let me do and see the output yeah we can see the output here yeah this is the output the output shows that initially the loss increases rapidly after around 250th epoch there is a very little decrease in the loss next we will try to you know we will make the predictions the last step is to make predictions on the test data to do so we simply need to pass the categorical test and sorry categorical underscore test underscore data and numerical underscore test underscore data to the model class the values returned can then be compared with the actual test output values now let me write the script to make predictions on the test class and print the cross entropy loss for the test data so you can see the output here the loss on the test is 0 0.3685 which is slightly more than 0 0.3465 achieved on the training set which shows that our model is slightly overfitting it is important to note that since we specified that output output layer will contain two neurons each prediction will contain two values for instance um, first five predicted values look like this i will write the script for that then you will understand let me run this see this is the output the idea behind such predictions is that if the actual output is zero the value at the index zero should be higher than the value at index one and vice versa we can retrieve the index of the largest value in the list uh, with the next script i will write that let me run this it's done now we will try to print the output and see it now you can see since the list of originally predicted outputs for the first five records the test value at zero indexes are greater than the values of the first indexes we can see zero in the first five rows of the processed outputs we can use the confusion underscore metrics accuracy underscore score classification underscore report classes from the sklearn matrix module to find the accuracy precision and recall values for the test set along with the confusion matrix let me write the script for that let me run this script you can see the output here The output shows that our model achieves an accuracy of 85.25% which is pretty impressive given the fact that we randomly selected all the parameters for our neural network model. See I would suggest that you try to change the model parameters, train and test splits, number and size of hidden layers etc to see if you can better if you can get better results thanks for watching please like share and subscribe thanks a lot